Is this a person, many people, or is this a thing? There's a passage in Genesis 3 that has caused a little bit of confusion. We want to look at it and see if we can try to figure out or ascertain who is God talking about and does the scriptures give us any sort of clue. Maybe it's one of those things where we think we know we have a pretty good idea, but we're not totally sure. This is Genesis 3.15. This is after the sin has occurred where Adam and Eve have both eaten the fruit and the Lord has lined up the serpent, who is the devil. We know he's the devil. He also has Eve as well as Adam. But when he gets to the serpent, notice what he says in 3.15, and this is where the, the confusion comes in. He says, and I will put enmity between you and the woman. The question is, who's the you? Well, that's pretty simple, between the serpent the devil and the woman. But now what we have here though, he says, and between your seed and her seed. When we go into this and between your seed, what we really have is we have a, con a continuation of what he's stating. It's not as though I'm going to put enmity between you two and then also between your seed and his seed. And so what he's stating is that the enmity is not so much between the woman and the serpent, but he's kind of making it understood between the seed of the woman and the seed of the serpent. Now, there's not a lot of debate in terms of who the seed of woman is. We know that to be because he's speaking singularly, and so the seed can be no, none other than Jesus. So that part is clear. But the question comes in, who is or what is or who are the seed of the serpent? The issue is going to be here is um, how the nouns are used. Let's go back to it. And he says, I will put enmity between your seed. And notice the your seed is singular. This is a singular seed of the devil, of the serpent, and her seed. This also is a singular seed, which is how we know this is Christ, not plural. But question, who's the seed? Obviously, we're not speaking of a, a physical seed as, the, as, as a serpent. Obviously, we're not speaking of a physical seed as though the serpent, as though the devil had a son, a child. No. However, there are passages that speak of people who are said you are of your father, the devil. But truth be told, many of us were like that. But I don't think that's who he's speaking of because if it's people, one, we've got a problem. One, because he's not speaking plurally. Now, could he be speaking of a collective and using the singular to describe the, the collective, the people as a singular people? That could be the case, but I don't see that. The reason why is because remember what's being spoken of, what happens. God tells them that in the day that you eat of it, not necessarily on that exact day, but it matter from speaking, in the day of that you eat of this, you shall surely die. Well, they will die. That's the problem. I think that's really what God is getting a hold of. He says, and I will put enmity between your seed and her seed. He shall bruise you on the head and you shall bruise him on the heel. Well, notice what he goes back to. He goes from his seed, the serpent seed, to he. Who's the he? The he is the seed of the woman. So now notice what's being spoken of. He's speaking about the seed of the serpent, put a question mark between who that is, and then the seed of the woman. So we know that her seed, Jesus, is going to do what? Bruise you on the head. Why didn't he say that her seed, Jesus, will bruise the serpent seed on the head? No, because the serpent seed and the serpent go hand in hand. And he, Jesus, shall bruise you on the head, you, the serpent, the devil, on the head, and you shall bruise him on the heel. What's he speaking of? Well, remember, we're still talking about the result of them eating this fruit and the fall. Well, what comes about from that? Well, death. Notice what the Bible speaks of. And as we work our way through it, we see in Isaiah 25, 8, notice what he says. It says, and he will swallow up death for all time. And the Lord God will wipe away his tears. Well, I'm sorry, wipe away tears away from all the faces. And he will remove the, repro the reproach of his people from all the earth. At some point in time, the Lord is going to do away with sin, but also the result of sin, which is death. Remember, he says that he will make his enemies, whose enemies? Jesus' enemies, his footstool. How was that going to be? Well, the last thing that has to happen in this whole um, saga of sin and death 
is that sin and death and the author of that being put away. Let's go to Revelation 20. Notice what he says. The last thing he's going to do, he says, Revelation 20. And let's start in verse, let's start in verse, let's start in verse nine. And they came up from, from the broad plain of the earth and surrounded the camp of the saints and the beloved city and fire came down from heaven and devoured them. And the devil, verse 10, who deceived them was thrown into the lake of fire and brimstone where the beast and the false prophet are also. And they will be tormented day and night forever and ever. Then I saw a great white throne and him who sat on it from whose presence the earth, I mean, the earth and heaven fled away and no place was found for them. And I saw the dead, the great and the small standing before the throne and the books were open and another book uh, was open, which is the book of life. And the dead were judged from the things which were written in the books according to their deed. And here it is. And the sea gave up the dead, which were in it and death and Hades gave up the dead, which were in them. And they were judged every one of them according to their deeds. Then death and Hades were thrown into the fire, the lake of fire. This is the second death, the lake of fire. So the last thing that he is going to do, this poison, this venom, remember, remember when we talk about a serpent, about a snake, his poison, his venom is where? In his head. And so what is, what is the Lord going to do? He's going to crush his head. He's going to bruise his head. And even the result of that, think about what's stated in 1 Corinthians 15. Let's start in verse 45 and work our way down to a very famous passage. He says, so it is, as it is written, the first man, Adam, became a living soul. The last man, at the last Adam, became a life-giving spirit. However, the spiritual is not first, but the natural, then the spiritual. The first man is from the earth, earthly. The second man is from above, obviously from heaven, speaking of Jesus, as is the earthly, so also are those who are earthly or earthy. And as in the heavenly, so are also those who are heavenly. Just as we have borne the image of the earthy, we will also bear the image of the heavenly. So obviously we're going from being like Adam to being like Christ. He says, now I say this, brethren, that flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God, nor does the perishable inherit the imperishable. But behold, I tell you a mystery. We will not all sleep, but we will be changed, all be changed, in a moment, in a twinkling of an eye, at the last trumpet, for the trumpet will sound, and the dead and, and the dead will be raised, imperishable, and we will be changed. So now he's speaking of going from this this world to that world, but I want you to focus on what he states. Verse fifty four. But when this perishable will have put on the imperishable, and this mortal will have put on immortality, then will come about the saying that is written. Here's what we said when we read this in Isaiah fifty twenty five: Death is swallowed up in victory. O death, where is your victory? O death, where is your sting? The sting of death is sin, and the power of sin is the law. But thanks be to God who gives us the victory through Jesus Christ. And so for me, as I look at this, just going according to the scriptures, the one thing that we know of Satan is that his seed seems to be death. He also says in Hebrews 2.14, notice what he says, says, therefore, since the children share in the flesh and blood, he himself likewise also partook of the same, that through death he might render powerless him who had the power of death, that is the devil. So the person that had the power of death, his I would say that this would be his seed, Satan had the power of death. Now, does that mean that Satan could kill someone? No, but because what he does would cause death, would bring about death. Remember what he did in the garden brought about death. And so what is Jesus going to do? Well, just what the, Lord, the word says in Genesis 3.15, he is going to step on his head. He's going to bruise his head and not only his head. Remember, he's also talking about his seed. And what is he going to do? Put his enemies, un put his enemies under his feet, make his enemies to be like a footstool. And so what is he speaking of? Well, he's only got really one enemy. That is the, that is the devil himself. And so he's going to render him powerless. That is the devil. And what else is he going to render powerless? He says the power of death, that is the devil. He's going to render him who had the power of death powerless. So when I look at Genesis 3.15, because we're speaking of the singular, not the plural, the seed, both seed that we're speaking of is singular. So to me, it would not really make sense to say that these are maybe demons. Some folks have had that as a hypothesis that he's speaking of demons. But again, that would be in the plural. What I think would be sinful man? Well, no, because again, that would also, it would seem to be, would have to be in the plural as well. And so whatever it is, is in the singular. Now, let me just say this also kind of in passing, this bogus theory about people 
being the seed of Satan. In other words, that Satan had some sort of physical relationship with Eve. Well, the Bible doesn't say that. And so we want to avoid adding things that one are unbiblical like that. But two, the scriptures simply don't say. That would be us voicing on the scriptures, some fairy tale, some story that truth be told was born out of a lot of racist thought in the past. You've seen people like the Mormons who would have said that Satan, because of his rebellion, fell and that dark skin was given to them as a sign of their failure. That's one racist example. Now, that's not the serpent seed uh, doctrine, but those who will say that there are those who are cursed to be like that because they are descendants of this vile union. Well, the Bible didn't say that. As a matter of fact, the Bible tells us who the firstborn was. And to say that Cain uh, was an offspring of Satan and Eve, that makes no sense. One, because they were all killed. The only ones that survived in the flood was Noah, his wife, and his three sons and their wives. And so that didn't even make any sense just to begin with, just make any, any logical or biblical sense. But in terms of a seed of Satan, the only one that I can come up with, and again, I could not say this definitively, nor could anyone say one way or the other what's definitively, but the best understanding that we can get, because God didn't give us all of the details, but since he's speaking about death and doing away or, or destroying what Adam brought about, which was death, and the cause of that, which was Satan, the serpent, well, then God defeating him, the Lord defeating Satan, would also be him finally defeating not only just Satan's sin, but also death.